Okay, so now I'm going to do the examples. Okay. All right. Make sure you have green is your top, yellow is your front. I'm going to start with this corner, but since it's already oriented, we get to skip that. We get to go to this one. It needs to go clockwise. Remember, this is clockwise. This is counterclockwise. So do that algorithm, and it fixed itself. Now we go down here. That one's already oriented, so we go to the next one. Which needs to go counterclockwise. Bring it into the buffer zone. Like that. And bring it back. Um, we got to skip a lot of corners there, so they're all oriented. Now we'll go to corner placement. This one needs to go to location 5, which is down here. Remember, you can only turn the front and left side twice, downside as many times as you want. So bring the front up twice. Bring the front back down. Um, this one needs to go to number 4, L2, F2. Bring it back. Uh, number seven, D two, F two. Bring it back around to the bottom. Okay, this needs to go to number one. Let's see, how many corners have we placed? I need to keep track of that to see if we need to do parity. We did 4, 1, 5, 7. That's 4. Um, here's the naughty corner. We'll put this in position 2. That's 5 corners placed. This one needs to go to number 8. Six corners placed. This one needs to go to number six. Okay. Uh, seven corners placed, and now we switch these two, and we don't need to do parity. Remember, parity is when you when you place an odd number. We've got the bad edge in its place, but flipped. We're going to put that to position G. This one needs to go down to position I. You won't always get all the letters. And sometimes they'll get edges placed to begin with, which is nice. Okay, this one needs to go to position... Uh, what is it? S. There we go. This one needs to go to position X. Hard to memorize, but easy to pull up. Just push that center. This one needs to go to um, D. This one needs to go to F. This one needs to go to P. This has to go to Q. This one has to go to uh, U or S T V rather. It has to go to V. This one goes to N. This one has to, or this one here has to go to L.
and of course we end on the bad corner so um, but this white one here does need to go to this place so we can't just do the algorithm gotta bring that edge up and your cube is solved now one thing I recommend doing to make sure you're putting the edges in this place correctly well first of all if you're running into any problems while doing this maybe you can do it while looking but while you're blind solving if you run into problems maybe because you're not putting the edges or corners back the same way or maybe you're turning sides that disturb the undisturbed zone when you're placing edges you can turn the um, let's see you can't turn front can't turn U can't turn R can't turn B so you can turn L, D, and any center slice but this one. When you're placing corners, you can turn F and L twice, only twice. The downside as many times as you want. For corner orientation, um, let's see. You just have to make sure you don't disturb this corner. So you can turn F, R, and D. So that's about it for blind solving. At this point, I hope you can do it successfully. So remember, when you're placing your edges, just practice without looking, placing all the edges. Start with um, A. Say you have to, Well, you wouldn't need A. Um, let's see. So you start with, start with uh, D. You know, you go like that. Or if you want to do C, bring it down, turn it down twice, bring it up. Practice placing all the edges without looking and then put them back without even doing the algorithm. So bring the edge up here, put it back. Bring the next edge up here, put it back. Then when you're done, your cube should be solved. You can do the same thing with corners if you're having trouble. If anything gets messed, messed up, make sure you're remembering parity. That's if you do an odd number of corners. Or if you do edges first, you still have to remember parity. And in that case, you would do it um, if you place an odd number of edges. So... Um, I know people are going to ask me for 2x2 two two blind solve tutorials. Unless I get a lot of people asking me, I'm not going to do it because the 2x2 two two is the same as placing 3x3 three three corners, okay? Um, mine has the same, this is an East Sheen 2x2, two two, but it has the same color orientation as 3x3, three three, except instead of orange, we have pink. Um, people, some people say it's purple. I'm colorblind, looks like pink to me, but I know people who aren't colorblind who say it's pink pink or purple, whatever color you want to say that is. Um, most 2x2s, two if you don't get replacement stickers, they have really weird orientation. Everything's all messed up. Like white is across from blue or something. Uh, yellow is across from green. I don't even know. So just make sure you know where those colors go. Find out exactly where that corner belongs. And the 2x2 two two is a bit trickier to memorize. Well, it's easy to memorize because you don't have to worry about edges. But there are no centers for reference. You have to work off of one corner. So here's how you would start with the 2x2. Two two. Um, you find the starting corner. I like to start with this one, which would be orange, green, and yellow. Uh, with your 2x2, two two, it may be different. Just make sure you have one starting corner. You don't need to memorize that. It's already placed and oriented. And then memorize from there. So that's what you use for reference. Because you don't have centers. I really don't want to make a 2x2 two two tutorial. It's quite pointless. But at this point, you should be able to blind solve successfully. Any questions, message me or post a comment or a video response, and I hope you can blind solve successfully. Uh, I can memorize in about 10 minutes, although I don't have an official record. It might be a little over 10 minutes. With a 2x2, two two, my record is like minute 40 or something, around there. So, thanks for watching, uh, and give me comments, feedback. I hope you can blind solve. Thanks for watching.